YouTube. My name is Shakayla and welcome to my channel, Manifesting with Karmic Side Gal. If you're new here, thanks for checking out my video. And I appreciate you just being here and getting a view. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and like this video if you did enjoy it or you got something valuable about it, okay? Now, if you are a part of the spiritual family, big hearts go out to you guys. I am so blessed that you continue to watch my videos and I'm just grateful for y'all. Like, thank you so much, okay? Today is the full moon and I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. I feel ready to take on the world, okay? But today's video is not about that, okay? I'm going to try and get this video up as fast as I can. So if you have time, if you can join me tonight for full moon Reiki meditation live here on YouTube, you can book on my website, fullmoonbeauties.com. I'll have it linked here in the description box. And without further ado, I'm going to get into today's topic. If you can see from the description, I am talking all about empaths today, okay? If you guys did not know, there are actually eight types of empaths. And this is new information to me. I always knew that I was empathic in multiple different ways, like it, but I didn't know that it was actually a thing, actually names for them, okay? And as soon as I got this information, I said, I got to make a YouTube video about this. I have to share this information with my family so that you guys can be totally aware of what's going on with you, your abilities, how it is that you can lean more into them and support yourself as you become more and more awakened and these abilities start to surface for you, okay? And not to say that you're not a true empath if you don't have all of these because you definitely are. Even just being one of the eight types still makes you an empath. But I want to talk about what an empath is and what an empath is not, okay? Nowadays, a lot of people go around just throwing, throwing the term empath around so loosely, okay? Everybody says they're an empath because they can feel something, because they have compassion for somebody, or because they have empathy. And being an empath doesn't mean that you're capable of having empathy, okay? Being an empath is a hyper awareness to other people, things, environments, um, animals even, okay? There's a hyper awareness, a sensitivity, okay? It is a psychic nature. It is a psychic ability. It's being an empath. It's being able to pick up on different vibrations going around in not just the physical environment, but the spiritual environment, in the emotional environment, picking up on that and truly feeling it within yourself, okay? So, everybody's not an empath. I'm sorry to say it. And just because you have empathy or compassion for other people or because you care a lot about other people does not make you an empath. But me going through this list and telling you guys what the eight type of empaths are, this is going to give you guys a more specific and accurate description. And then you can relate to and drop down in the comments and let me know which of the eight you are. If you're multiple types of empaths, I can't wait to hear about it. So first, I'm going to just tell a little story time per usual about how it is that I stumbled upon this information. So last weekend, my sister's girlfriend had her baby shower, okay? And she is so pregnant, it's not even funny. I don't even know how she had a shower this late in the game. Like, she's about 36 weeks measuring at 38, and she is full on contracting, honey, like, full on. We were there the whole day, and then Sunday, the next day, was the Super Bowl. So I went back over to her sister's house on Sunday again so that we could all watch the game together and hang out. And um, her sister was having no contractions at all. The first thing that was eerie was, soon as I got there, I mean, I wasn't even there for 15 minutes, I got my cycle. Okay, now I'm not going to say that I don't be on brand with the full moon, but last month my cycle was on the new moon and then now it's rotating back to the full moon. And immediately I was like, oh crap, I got my cycle. And I am not the type of um, female that has like a difficult cycle. I don't 
have a long cycle is really actually short compared to most females i don't have um an extra heavy flow or anything like that and for most intensive purposes i don't really have an interruption in my life for the most part i get a little bit um tenderness in my breast maybe i'm a little bit more hungry and if anything i'm moody like a little bit more irritable but as far as cramps or anything like that, I've never really experienced that in my years of having a cycle, which I'm 31 now. So you can imagine by the time I got one, I didn't have this joint for a good minute. So I'm like just chilling out. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like getting this extreme back pains. And if you guys are not familiar with me, you're not aware, I have two kids, okay? My son is nine and my daughter is six. So I've had two births. Both of my kids were natural, no epidural. Max was born in a bathtub and Eva, I literally had her squatting down. So I've felt it all. I know what birth feels like, child. And when I tell you I was getting those same back pains that I had when I was pregnant with Max and then also pressures around my belly, it was like, it felt like I was in labor. And I was like telling my girlfriend, like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. I've never felt like this. Like, wow, these pains are so intense. And when I tell you, it just was like, oh my God. And she's like, well, do you want me to rub your back? And I'm like, that's really not going to be helpful because the pain is inside of me. Like, it's not a rub your back, I'm a feel better type of pain. And then hours went by and it was like the pain was coming and going and coming and going like your contractions would. And then... I don't remember if it was me or if it was my girlfriend, but one of us brought up like, what if, what if I was feeling her sister's labor pains? And when I tell you, her sister wasn't in any discomfort the, the, the whole day. Like Saturday, she was definitely in a lot of discomfort. But on Sunday, it seemed like she was chilling and comfortable the whole time. And I literally was like, uh. And then she was like, I was like, I didn't want to say nothing because I didn't want to sound crazy. Because, you know, like psychic people, if you have any psychic abilities, before you are totally comfortable with your abilities or before you feel even comfortable talking to them with other people, you kind of second guess yourself. You kind of like, am I tripping? Is something wrong with me? If I talk to somebody about this, are they going to think I'm crazy? So I'm like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to sound crazy. And she was like, honestly, I was thinking it like, what if you was feeling her actual pains? And then I was like, I'm going to have to Google this because this has to be a thing. And lo and behold, I pull up a website. It's called Well and Good. I'm going to link it below in the description box so that you can get your eyes on all of this information. But it says it's eight different type of empaths. And I was excited to read about this because y'all know I love to soak up new knowledge, hear new things, and really just have the confirmation that I wasn't crazy and that I was feeling exactly what I was feeling. So I'm first going to jump in and talk about an emotional empath, which I think most people are familiar with. And when they think and say I'm an empath or so-and-so is an empath, this is what they immediately go to, okay? is this definition of what an emotional empath is. So emotional empath is the ability to pick on other people's emotions and a lot of people, a lot of empaths will say this is why they are, um, what's that called when you don't like going out or being around large crowds of people? I can't think of it right now and I'm not even going to try y'all. I'm not even going to try this happen to me every time I'm like channeling. So a lot of people say they just don't like being in large crowds. They don't like being around a lot of people. It makes them uncomfortable. They start to feel not in, in control of their emotions or just not good. It's like they're picking up of the energy of the other people. And this is what an emotional um, emotional empath is, okay? You might go to a concert and then like you might be able to pick up on the energy, the excitement of the room, but you might go to like a funeral and maybe you wasn't even that sad to begin with but now you just feel like so crappy and sad and you're like crying and stuff and this is something I can totally relate to I remember 
the first funeral I ever went to, I was a little kid, like, I don't know, maybe like six or seven and my great aunt passed away. And it wasn't that I didn't know her, like I knew her, I grew up kind of around her, but like not really close with her. And I was so struck in with grief when she passed away, it was kind of insane. And I feel like even some people in my family thought I was being dramatic as like a six or seven year old. Like, why is she so sad about this? Like, what do little kids really know about death? But I was emotionally picking up on all of those people's energies. And it was like coming through me to the point where I was feeling that sadness, that grief. And I couldn't help but to cry and be upset and ask people, what's going on? I understand. What? Why are people dying? Like, I truly did not understand and could not gather those things. So that is the first type of empath, emotional empath. Now, the second empath we're going to talk about is something that is kind of connected to emotional empath. These two kind of go hand in hand in a sense, which is an intuitive empath, okay? So intuitive empath has the gifts of an emotional empath, but those emotions are going to be like, not only can they feel the emotions, but they can intuitively pick up on why it is that person is feeling that way, okay? Um, another story is a few months ago, sometime last year, I had went out with one of my best friends. And um, I when we went out, the only person that I knew was her. And we was meeting up a bunch of other people. And everybody that was there, I totally did not know them at all. And when I tell you the entire time I could hear people's thoughts, I had never in my life experienced this. And it was like, am I tripping? And then I realized I wasn't tripping because I met somebody there. Shout out to Andrew. And he was talking back to me with his thoughts. It was insane. It was like he was also an intuitive impact. We were like talking in our minds, having a whole conversation. And then he says out loud, you know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, I know what you mean, Andrew. Like, what? We were not. And then the next day I told his girlfriend about it. And she was like, that's so crazy because sometimes he literally does that. Like he literally reads my thoughts. And I think like the, um, I have like read people's minds before, but I didn't actually hear it in my mind it's just almost that I intuitively knew what they were gonna say this ha used to happen to me all the time when I did lashes still and every day I would have a lot of clients I probably had like seven or eight clients a day okay and they would be laying on my bed and we would be having conversations like giving lash therapy per what I always did is like something that really got me into psychology and wanting to become a therapist now is like being a lash technician is like being a hairstylist or a barber. Like people come in and they just start talking to you and telling you all your problems. And next thing you know, you're like being their shoulder to cry on or listening or giving them advice and stuff. And it's just like, I knew that I had a purpose in that. And it would happen to me so frequently, the more people that I was around, like first it would just be like with my partner, I could hear her thoughts before she was saying them or with my kids, I could hear their thoughts before they were saying it. And then it got so frequent to my regular clients, I was literally knowing what they were going to say before they say it or like saying it at the same time as them. It's like my intuition was spot on. And I not only was picking up on what their emotions, but I already knew the reason. Like a lot of tarot readers, that's why they say, don't tell me anything beforehand. I don't need to know anything. I'm an intuitive. When you book a reading with me and you see my services, I'm going to say I'm an intuitive healer. That means that my intuition is automatically going to pick up on things that's going on with you that you don't have to tell me. I don't have to read the cards, nothing. I just know. I can't tell you how I know. There's usually not a lot of voices in my head up at this point. I just know. And that is being an intuitive empath, okay? Now we're going to jump back and talk about what I was saying earlier about me being able to physical feel, physically feel my girlfriend's sister's birthing pains, which is called a physical empath, okay? This one, I don't, I feel excited that I have this ability now, but I also feel like, mm, I don't know about that, okay? There's pros and cons to this one, okay? A physical empath is being able to pick up on the physical 
feelings that somebody might be having, whether it is pain or whether it is happiness or whether it is a boost of confidence, okay? Whatever physical feelings, physical sensations somebody could be having in their body, like even if it's down to itchiness or hunger, you can start to pick up on that as well. And even guys, even something as simple as getting a breakout. If I'm around somebody a lot and they start getting the breakouts, then I too can start popping up and having a few breakouts here and there too. So with the physical empath, it's way more than just emotional or being sensitive to somebody. It's like literally physically picking up on the things that's occurring in the people around your life, picking up on it, and then it physically manifesting into your life. So if you are a physical empath, you want to get around some people that got money, you want to get around some people with healthy lifestyles, like a good gym partner, somebody that is organized, like surround yourself with the people that you can pick up on their energy and then it starts to physically manifest into your life as well. Like I'm out to use this to my benefit, y'all. The next empath that we have is called a dream empath. And this one is really cool and I think also relatable. I know a lot of my friends, a lot of my mutuals on like Twitter and TikTok, they all say that they are dreamers, they're dream interpreters, dream intuitives. And I even have a lot of people in my family that are dreamers. Um, and what that means is that you can connect with people in a dream state, okay? And this can even go further into like um, lucid dreaming and things like that. But also your dreams are sending you messages. They're telling you things. You might have psychic premonitions through your dreams. Um, they just might send you messages through your dreams. Like maybe like, you know, if you dream about a certain animal or if you have dreams, it's like confirmation of something. Like sometimes you might have a dream and it literally be like, stop right here. Like a billboard that says stop right here. And that's literally a message telling you and you have to decipher what that means. If you're a dream empath, then you want to definitely get yourself a dream book, something that can help you interpret what these dreams mean. And you also want to get a dream journal that you keep beside you so that you, when you wake up, you can write down those dreams just in case you don't remember them. Um, one thing that you should do is program your subconscious into remembering your dreams. Like I have started doing this since I be since I started going on my tea break. And what I do is I just tell myself before I go to sleep, like I remember my dreams. I remember all of my dreams. And within the last three weeks, I will say that I have um, been remembering the dreams that I've been having far more than I used to. Like I used to, it'll be gone when I'm wake up. Okay. I'm this type of person that if I want to remember a dream, ain't no writing it down. I literally have to write then and there, record a voice message or a video just so I can remember what happened. So that's something that you might want to think about doing as a dream um, empath. Now, for all my plant mamas and my plant daddies out there, did you know that being a good plant mom and a plant dad might not just be based upon skill? It might actually be that you are a plant empath meaning that you can pick up on the needs of your plants around you the plants in nature and what it is that they need to heal to feel better it's almost like taking care of a baby you know how like babies communicate with crying it's like a plant empath has that gift to know how it is that their plants are communicating with them and just being able to nurture them properly okay being a plant empath is so cool. And I bet so many people, like especially I see nowadays, people that seem like they have that extra green thumb. I remember I grew up uh, around a lot of plants. Like my grandmother has always been a heavy gardener. I can't wait to share this with her. She used to grow vegetables, fruit in our garden, just beautiful plants every year. And even the inside of our home was filled with plants. Even now, the inside of my grandmother's home is like a fucking jungle, okay? And I want to be just like her, but I keep killing my plants. I am not that girl yet, okay? But... People who are just naturally have this gift to care for plants, for um, to understand them, to not require much research, to know how to care for them, you are probably a plant empath. And this really leads into the next type of empath, which is an earth empath. So earth empaths are similar to plant empaths on being able to pick up on plants and things, but it's not just plants, it's just everything in nature. And having this higher consciousness and attunement to 
the earth itself to nature itself okay and everything going on in the world and this doesn't even mean just the physical things but the spiritual things because the earth is a spiritual being okay having that higher consciousness so these are going to be people who maybe even like know like weather like mm, it feels like it's gonna rain and it's like no sign of rain no rain in the forecast and they're just like oh yeah it feels like it's gonna rain like that's probably an earth impact People that are Earth Empath are naturally in tune with nature and they need to be in nature to be reprogrammed. You're more than likely an Earth Empath. But also if you have a higher awareness for Earth issues, like people who do like politics and any type of things with like trying to save the environment, heal the environment. These people are definitely Earth Empaths because they just have this deep caring, okay? My daughter is six years old. And although these are things that I share with her because I do care for the earth and love the earth, this was a learned behavior to me. I wasn't always this version of myself where I cared about recycling and using less waste and, um, you know, just taking up less space um having less emission i wasn't always that girl but my daughter she's only six and she literally will be sad for the earth like if we go outside and there's like trash around she's like mama can we go outside and pick up the trash later because it's just so messed up like she'll go into a whole rant it's so messed up people are not taking care of the earth and she'll do it to any for any random reason go on a whole tangent about how People need to take care of the earth and do better. And it's just like, if you could say for yourself that even from a young age, you just have this higher awareness and higher empathy towards our environment as far as the earth and nature is concerned, you are probably an earth empath. Now, last but not least, which is probably my favorite of all of the type of empaths and maybe the one that I feel like I can relate the most to, honestly, even though several of these may apply to me, I, this one is just like mm, my heart, okay? And that is an animal empath, okay? Animal lovers, everybody out there. And I'm not just talking about dog lovers or cat lovers or, you know, whatever it is that you love. I'm talking about people who really just have a deep connection with animals and being able to sense them, to understand their needs, to have unspoken conversations with them. Na animals naturally gravitate towards you. You are probably an animal empath, okay? Now, you might be somebody who wants to have a lot of animals, even if you can't afford them. You find your way to be around animals. When you're out in nature, wild animals may come up to you. Like, um, I'm trying to think who is that dude, but I know he's like really popular on all social media platforms, but uh, Brother Nature. Oh my God. Brother Nature is like a kindred spirit to me, okay? You know how he's like always out with the deer and they just like come up to him naturally like he's totally an animal empath like and embodies that and that's something i could personally relate to like no matter where i am i can guarantee that an animal is going to be all up on me sometimes i'm just sitting outside like hanging out with my kids and one of my neighbors will be walking their dog and the dog will literally come up and nuzzle his entire face i mean a big ass dog like just nuzzle his entire face onto me um one of my friends, Emily, I talked about her before in another video and I said like she's literally like a zoo lady. She has so many animals. She's definitely an animal empath. Not only does she have this higher like intuition for animals, but she just loves them so much in the environment and all of her animals live together in peace. She's got multiple birds, um, multiple cats, multiple dogs, just everything you can think of. And I love being at her home because her animals love me. Like every time I go over there, all of them, they want to be on me. They want to play with me. Um, the birds, they just nestle me. Like if you ever seen any of my TikToks and you see the birds, those are my friend's birds. And I can't wait to get my own bird. Like I can't wait to have a farm. 
Like that's my dream to have a farm full of animals, not necessarily using them, just caring for them and loving them and providing them with the space of peace and love. Um, even if you are like a vegan or a vegetarian and you've done it naturally or wasn't like imposed on you and it's something that you just always felt in your heart that you just didn't feel good about eating animals or even if you're responsible with your meat eating, like you won't eat irresponsibly raised meat like you only eat farm raised or whatever it is you may be an animal empath i hope that this video was super educational for you guys and just fun to hear and talk about please let me know in the comments if you are an empath and if you are any of these eight type of empaths or multiple of them i want to hear share a story about when it was that you realized that you were empath or one of these types I am wishing you guys nothing but love, blessings, and peace. And I will see you in my next video. Peace out.